Welcome to Gun News in 5 Minutes or Less, where we will talk about events and happenings in the gun industry, ammunition pricing and so forth, politics related to firearms, personalities, new releases on the market, and anything else I can fit in. This is brought to you by DR Drake 63 Today we're going to talk about the Henry Rifle Company and how they almost single-handedly led the resurgence in sales of lever-action firearms in the United States. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the Henry name. The Henry rifle was introduced in 1862 and produced until 1864 by the New Haven Arms Firearm Company, later purchased by Winchester and called the 1866. In 1996, Louis Imperato founded the Henry Repeating Arms Rifle Company, along with his son, Anthony Imperato. They started out with the H1, which has sold over a million copies to date, a 22 lever action firearm, and later introduced the H4, or the Golden Boy, which has been widely popular. These firearms were modeled in terms of the feeding mechanism after the Marlin 39A. During a time span where Tactical has replaced wood and steel, they've done quite well. Now, it's not like consumers didn't have choices prior to Henry coming onto the scene. They certainly did, but between mismanagement of companies, some perceived quality issues, or real, as well as overseas manufacturing, you really haven't seen the proliferation that has come about since Henry hit the scene. As well as overseas manufacturers, uh, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, Henry is based in Bayonne, New Jersey, and their main manufacturing plant is in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. They have a group of 500-plus employees who are producing well over 300,000 firearms a year. You'll see that there are many commemorative-type editions of the Henry Rifles. Anthony M. Prado, who is the current CEO and owner of the company, has put a lot of his time into outreach with various organizations, Boy Scouts, as well as law enforcement agencies, and does a lot of work with the veterans community. Very smart on his part. You've seen also a proliferation of new models coming out from Henry just in the last few years, offering side loading gates, lever action shotguns, various types of finishes, as well as bringing back the original Henry rifle in a, a more modern configuration. In a relatively short time, Henry has become the fifth largest rifle manufacturer, known for quality, customer service, and decent accuracy. They've done a tremendous job. Henry certainly didn't invent the lever action rifle, but I think they had a heck of a lot to do with the resurgence of interest in that platform. That and a number of states which have gone to rules which don't allow for higher capacity detachable magazines. Add to that the interest in plinking, some nostalgia, and I find it amazing what they've been able to do for the industry overall. They offer a quality, affordable platform for a lot of entry-level shooters with the 22s, and they've smartly caught on that there's been a void that's been created because of mishaps with other manufacturers, which allow them to get into the larger, big bore type of calibers. So they've done a great job. They've really latched on to the made in America or not made at all because that strikes a chord with a lot of firearms consumers in the U.S. They've been very involved in community involvement, working with veterans, working with law enforcement organizations such as the Boy Scouts and so forth. So hats off to Henry for finding a niche and I think that they'll push others to step up their game. I personally believe that Henry's success has got the attention of folks like Ruger who said, hey, we're gonna buy Marlin and make a go of it. I don't think they're 100% sure what all they're gonna do with it yet, but they know there's a market there, and that market is largely the result of Henry. And this has been Gun News in five minutes or less. Please click and subscribe for future updates.